is no open mouth kissing because kissing is a very intimate thing. And it occurs to me that today we treat kissing very cavalier, but more importantly, we treat sex as equally cavalier when it comes to the mating process. And so in many cases where, um, and particularly for men, I think, you know, people now evaluate kissing as very benign, but also for men in particular, that sex is rather benign. In other words, it's no big deal. And yet when you're in the dating process and you get physically intimate with someone, you might feel like you're getting to know them. You might feel like you might actually be intimate with them just like in the movie Pretty Woman, be, you know, open mouth kissing is very intimate and you might believe that someone is being intimate with you. And yet sadly, many men don't value physical intimacy as something that is emotionally intimate. And so today we're gonna lean into the conversation of how to actually determine if someone is even capable of being emotionally intimate with you. Now, I think it's important to recognize that when men, for those of you that have heard the rhetoric that men are on the hunt, excuse me, men are on, men love the chase, and they might seem like they're very open and emotional during this period of time. And that's certainly true at a baseline level. A man can be rather open in the beginning especially if he's talking about his past and he's talking about it from a problematic perspective. And what I mean to say, you, it's very, you have to be very careful for those that talk about their past relationships in a negative light. And the reality is, is for those of us in midlife, for those of us in midlife, there's a good chance we've had one, two, three significant relationships. There might be a marriage in there. For some people, there might be two marriages. There might be a long-term relationship in there or a series of short-lived relationships. When someone is complaining about their past, it might seem like they're being vulnerable. They might be authentic and they're transparent. And yet, are they really capable of opening up to you at a deeper emotional level? And today we're going to explore what is needed for that, for a man to actually open up at a deeper emotional level. I think it's important to recognize that in today's dating, uh, unlike the past, used to be in the past that when a man liked you, he pursued you, you love the idea of being, him being chivalrous and he's opening car doors and he's taking you out to dinners and there's oftentimes romance that, is, that, that seems to be the, the hook to bring someone in. Now today, people are hyper-focused on what their list covers, and more important, they're hyper-focused on attraction, especially in the area of looks. Instead of some of the important characteristics needed for a healthy, happy relationship, which I'm going to share in a moment, but I want you to think about this for a second. In today's dating market environment, unlike the past, there's such a hyper focus on our list of what we need because many of us have a list of what we don't want. Let me ask you something. Do you have a list of what you don't want in a relationship? I'm sure you have a list of boom, 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 boom. Okay. In addition, we then hyper focus on attraction, that romantic piece, that physical attraction piece, instead of the real roots to a healthy, happy relationship. Have any of you watched the Indian matchmaking? This is a matchmaker from India that tries to pair people together based on a lot of criteria that isn't necessarily based on looks, but it's more based on values. That's right. When two people connect because their values are aligned and their lifestyles are aligned, and more importantly, their emotional maturity are lying, they have a greater chance for relationship success. So here's, okay, and again, I'm in a moment, I'm gonna share with you what's it gonna take for a man to open up, but I wanna share with you six things that are critically important for a relationship to actually take off. And, and I, I got sidetracked for a moment, and it's important to do, uh, to physically be in each other's presence regularly during a short period of time. In other words, during a six week period of time, 
Ideally, seeing each other as much as you possibly can see each other to truly get to know one another. Because what is dating? Dating is a process of getting to know another person. It's evaluating if this person is capable of a serious relationship. And yet, again, many of you are hyper-focused on the need for romance to feel a sense of attraction for a person instead of the more important things that we're going to talk about right now. So what is needed to actually get a man to open up? Well, the, for two people, they need to have good character. Now, I believe most people have good character for the most part. Good character. In other words, most people are good people. There's very few truly bad people in the world. Most people have decent character, okay? But they need to be kind as well. And there are a lot of wounded human beings that aren't very kind. And yes, there are a lot of wounding beings that their character isn't about being mindful for others. It's more about themselves. I get that. More importantly, they need to have an agreeable and giver type of personality. This is something to really focus on. Are they a giver? Are they, do they have an agreeable personality or are their wounds in such a place where they're confrontational, they're critical? In addition, they need to, did I talk, oh, I forgot to talk about fun and playfulness. That's critically ne needed for a healthy, happy relationship, for two people to have fun and to have two people to have play. And beside the last one, they need to be intentional. Do they intentionally want something beyond the surface? And last but not least, have they healed from the wounds from their past? Because if you really want to get a man to get a sense of how a man feels about you, it's critically important to get a sense of his past relationships, his past relationships, and find out what happened in those past relationships? Because your past is an indicator of how you would operate in the future. And yet many of you, I've done this myself, I've listened to a person talk about their past relationships. They were so wounded from their last relationships. They were so hurt that quite frankly, that bleeds in, that residue bleeds into their capacity to actually be truly intentional in any future relationship. So sadly, folks, dating is a process of being a detective. And one of the most important questions you might want to consider asking a man is how can I trust you beyond fidelity? How can I trust you? Why should I trust you? Another question, how and why should I trust you? And trust, and it's critically important, this doesn't have to do with fidelity. This is how do I know you have my best interest in hand? How do I know you have my best interest in hand? Folks, let me tell you something. If you approach the process from a strong, confident perspective in your sovereignty and your self-worth, but also a sense of virtue, most men, if you are intentional by declaring what it is you want in relationship, it will scare the looky lose away. It will scare the looky lose away because believe it or not, men do have a virtue button within them. If they believe that you're virtuous, they are less likely to use you. That's right, they're less likely to use you. Now, that means that 90% of men will run if you set your intention, you establish your standards early on. So what do standards look like? Well, I'm going to give you an example of the standard I used. I wanted a relationship where we saw each other at least two, three, or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that led to either moving in together or getting married. So that was my standard. What is your standard? My invitation for you is to really decide what is your standard. But Jonathan, I'm in a relationship with a guy that lives 100 miles away and we don't get to see each other very frequently. Folks, telephone-based relationships are the weakest form of relationship. If you really want to know how a man feels about you, it is going to happen in physical presence with one another. It is in the doing of things together. 
I've interviewed now a dozen of my friends who have recently, when I say recently, in the last 10 years met someone, and most of them, by the way, 95% uh, of this group of men I'm talking to had met their partner through an online connection, through an online connection, whether it was a dating app, whether it was a social uh, media app, they met through an online connection. And the one common denominator was when they liked this person, they wanted to spend as much time as possible with this person. That's a good indicator. And these are the men capable of opening up because they actually want to build a life with someone. When you're doing part-time dating, when you're doing part-time relationships, they turn into casual relationships because there's no real deep roots of trust built in the early stage. And, and more importantly, it's not just trust, it's a deep sense of friendship with someone. Folks, I know many of you believe you have friends because you're talking to them on the phone and it's great that you feel connection with them. But the, and they might even open up over the phone. You might be thinking they're totally opening up. But guess what? Opening up over the phone is no different than someone talking to a therapist on a phone. If you want to build a deep rooted relationship with someone, it's going to require, it takes, look at, Jay Shetty says it takes about 40 hours of face-to-face -face time to get to know someone. I say it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build the first layer of trust. And Jay Shetty goes on to say it takes 200 hours of face-to-face -face time to build a friendship with someone. And let me just say this, this 200 hours has to happen in a relatively short period of time, not over years, not over years. And so this is the challenge that many people face is that they believe that the man that they're talking to on the phone is opening up, but they're not engaging in a relationship with you because truly getting to know someone, truly getting a man to open up is going to happen in the doing of things when you can actually do things together and then talk about the things that you're doing together. Is this making sense? Is this resonating with you all? I hope it is because ladies, you are in charge of your relationship destiny, not the guy. I know many of you would like to just sit back in your feminine energy and let the man lead. But as I've said repeatedly, folks, most men are clueless. They're winging it. They're winging it. When you establish your standard, when you establish your boundaries, it gives the man a roadmap. And when it comes to opening up to a man, let me just say this to get to know how a man feels. It starts by leading by example. We men are poor communicators of our feelings. So when you begin to express your feelings, when you start to express, and that, it, like it's when I talk about expressing your feelings, it starts by saying, I like you. That's a great way to say that's something how you feel, okay? I like you, I appreciate you, I care about you. Tell me more. I'd like to hear about things. And if they are reluctant, then coming back to what I said earlier, remember I said character. Remember I said kindness. Remember I said fun and play. Remember I said agreeable and giver. And remember I said intentional. One of the most critically thing, important things you must be aware of, has this person healed from their past relationships? Because again, for those of us in midlife who have had maybe one, two, or three significant relationships, if someone is truly wounded from their past relationships, it makes they, your relationship with them is the placeholder relationship oftentimes. We call this the transition relationship. The relationship with you ends up healing him, but guess what happens? He then ends the relationship with you to be a bright, shiny penny with someone else. This is why if people haven't truly done the inner work to heal, by the way, for example, in my book, what the heck is self-love anyway? A journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. All the links below I recommend are of my books. Are, I, I have an outline of books I highly recommend here. Recommended reading, studies, teachings, and workshops to actually for you also to heal so you can be in a better place. But again, human beings, by the time they mid hit midlife, we have this belief that they're more emotionally mature. But guess what? Most men in particular, and women too, are emotionally constipated. 
they are backed up because there's a there's a blockage in many of them. So while they might want some occasional companionship, while they might want some occasional connection, while they might occasionally want sex with you, it's more critically important to evaluate this person's capacity to actually open up because you can't take a broken person and hope they'll open up or you can, but what oftentimes happens, and I'm just being mindful, listen, I'm your protector, I'm your big brother. If I could be there on a first date, I'd have the shotgun pointed at the guy's face and saying, what's your intentions with my sister? Because it used to be, if you treated someone poorly, there was a consequence to it. You have to be your own matchmaker. You have to be your own advocate in your life. Because guess what? No one else is being your advocate. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Look, at one of the things I do in my private coaching when I work with clients is I help them be a better picker to fix their broken picker because we all have a broken picker. Because again, we tend to hyper-focus on the list and we hyper-focus on looks instead of character, kindness, fun and playfulness, agreeable giver, intentional and more importantly, healed. And if you need some support, check out the link right here to a free discovery call. There's a link below to schedule a call to see if working with a coach is right for you. All right. I think this will be a great place to start taking questions since we're doing a live stream today.